By the time the Great Depression hit, women's suffrage was a decade old, but in New York City, not a single woman had been elected to state legislature between 1920 and 1933. By the early 1930s, however, some small stress signs began to appear in the walls of resistance to women in electoral politics. Women's concerted efforts within political circles, as well as the changing New Deal context, created just a handful of important possibilities. Women by the names of Leo Lane, Eunice Hunton Carter, Jane Bolin, Ruth Whitehead Whaley, and Sarah Pelham Speaks all ran for elected office in Harlem during the 1930s, and they weren't the only women who ran. More than a dozen black women had run on the Republican, AOP, Liberal, and Socialist Party tickets over a 15-year period. They ran against each other, and they ran against black men as well as white men and white women. Even though they had lost their elections, the sizable number of votes that Carter and Speaks in the 1930s and Richardson in the 1940s won, suggested that black women deserved a greater voice in New York City politics and policy making. At the same time, the Democratic Party dominated party politics, and it resisted burning black women for office in any serious way, um, even though a number of black women had long been active in the party. Alas, black women were slowly chipping away at Tammany's resistance, but when and how long would it take to finally see change? Just a few more years, as you might imagine. Here's the 1950s. Despite the years of violent struggle that still awaited those who believed in racial justice, there was no mistaking the seismic shift in the nation's social landscape that the 1954 Brown v. Board of Education decision generated. Black New Yorkers contributed their own blow to the walls of segregation and inequality that same year. With a record number of African American women registered to vote as Democrats in Harlem, the party was finally made to realize that black women were an important and active constituency. I'll leave us on the edge of the 1960s, a decade that saw vitally important breakthroughs in the New York State Senate and the New Manhattan Borough Presidency with Constance Baker Motley's elections and with Shirley Chisholm's ultimate success in her bid for the United States Congress. Over the course of 60 years, African-American women could count some notable successes that resulted from their state-centered activism. They mediated white women's racism in the suffrage movement, they proved their loyalty and worth to male political party bosses so they could have a chance at the polls, and they won over voters, first for city and state seats, and then for national office. As this brief history suggests, it was essential for black female candidates to gain acceptance among Democratic Party stalwarts if they hoped to advance their political careers, especially in New York City. Um, those who ran prior to that helped accustom voters to seeing women as candidates, but they lost every election they ran in. Um, and so I will just uh, show you, remind us here that the last hurdle remains and it is the one that Shirley Chisholm ran for. And we